What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 241 of the Lured Up podcast, where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network. Today's Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. I'm Ken. I'm Adam. There's Adam. What's up, man? Yes, this is my voice. You can hear me through the airwaves. We are testing for proper modulation. Bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop. A little Ben Stern for you. What's going on, man? How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. That's Just good, working. Man. Working. Hardly working. Working hard. Working hardly hard. Working. working hard. Gearing up towards Christmas. There's lots of boxes of chocolate to be made. You guys do a lot. You do mail order, right? Like, so yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's madness. That's madness. Yeah. So you can actually go to KellerHouse.com and order some chocolates delivered to you. May I may I uh, recommend the salted caramel stuff? I don't know. I don't know. You sent me something one year that was amazing. Uh, was salted caramel. Well, I, right? I think I sent you pretzels. Or no, I brought those to you. I brought those. Yes. Uh, but I think I sent you some salted the sea salt caramels. Oh, that's the good stuff right there. Yes. <laughs> with the with the crumblies of salt on it on the outside, the crystals. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we do have uh, some decent amount of uh, of crap to go through on today's show. We're going to recap our last week, including Community Day Classic Dratini. We had Crow Gunk Spotlight Hour. Guzzlord, of course, is here as part of uh, Greedy Gluttons. We'll get to that in a second. We have uh, the Scarlet Violet crossover crossover event. This kind of happened immediately following Community Day Classic, and everyone was very confused. A lot of people still are very confused, so... We'll talk about all of that. Greedy Gluttons is here, and the reception has been mixed. You know, the past couple of events of events have kind of been up or down. People have said they liked it. People have said, "Listen, you know, I feel that I that I we haven't seen Squavet in forever." It is good seeing it. Just yeah, it just Pokemon. I yeah. honestly saw it on the map, and I was like, "What is that?" And I caught it, thinking I was like, "I, I don't know if I've caught this before." And then realizing that I had a hundred percent one from research from the last time it, it came, <laughs> but that, that's like the impact you were saying, like even like a Caterpie, right? Caterpie's not in the spawn pool, so if you were to just see one, it would feel special, right? Right. You haven't seen, exactly. You know, a Squavet in forever, and then you see it, and you're like, this normally wouldn't be an exciting Pokemon, but because I haven't seen it in six months, <laughs> it makes it exciting again. Exactly. <laughs> I'll take exactly. It. I'll take it. Uh, data has been released on Pigo's economic impact through IRL events in 2022. The data I is pretty saw impressive. That. It's, uh, it's, it's impressive. actually really cool. Uh, really cool to see the, you know, the, the real world implication of, of having these big ass events and, you know, why towns and cities and countries and local governments and all that stuff would want to have a big Pigo event in their area because, it brings in big bucks, so we'll talk, we'll talk about GoFest and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the onslaught of November events will continue with Teddy Ursa Community Day happening this weekend, Saturday the 12th. I'm so excited for this. Uh, apparently, PvP people are not excited because the special move for um, Ursa Luna is uh, shite. From what I understand, we'll have to. I'm pretty we'll sure that's not practice. what the move name is called. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ursaluna, you shite. <laughs> it, but it wasn't happened. effective. <laughs> uh, we'll do a raid guide and battle party for Guzzlord, as we mentioned last week. As we were recording last week, Guzzlord was just going to be coming into the mix. So now that it's here, as of yesterday, we'll we'll do a little raid guide battle party. Get you prepped to take it out, man. I am enjoying raiding this thing. Let me tell you, it looks phenomenal. It is a good-looking ultra beast. Yeah, looks really great. And then we'll we'll close things out with a with a light with some light banter. I just want to talk about raid. I mean, uh, egg locked shinies. Right, we had Noibat this past time, and then now we have some some other other Pokemon locked behind eggs again. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't feel right, especially with you know, shitty boxes in the shop and it not being that easy to get your hands on on a good amount of incubators like it used to be. So we'll talk about it. And I want to hear what everybody has to say in the coming week. But let, let's start with a little recap. We I guess we could talk about the wrap up of Halloween because that kind of ended in that window from last episode. But, you know, I really enjoyed the Halloween events. So I knew that coming out of that window that they were going to have to do something to make it exciting and to keep the momentum going 
And you and know, what do they do I'm, for you, Ken? What do they do? They gave me Community Day Classic. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yo, but it's all about the Stardust. You're always complaining that you have no Stardust. So. Listen, I spent it all. Everything that I caught, I just spent it all. On what? I don't even know, okay? I was looking through my stuff, <laughs> and I just power up all the hundos. Anything that's not fully powered up, I just click and take it. So I've I've come to having this process where I really only power stuff up when I get tasks. So if I get a task for Mega Energy, like a, a power up Pokemon three, five, seven, ten, whatever times, that's when I'll go to my hundo list and just invest. But outside of that, I'm not really doing any bulk powering up unless I get, you know, something awesome where it's like instant level forty or instant level fifty. But other than that, I just slowly chip away during those tasks. And, and sometimes I'll try to find like two tasks, three tasks to stack on top of each other with powering up. But otherwise, that's that's exactly how I'm doing it. So I've maintained this balance around 14.5 million Stardust for like the last year. I've just always float around that number. I always float around like the single to double digits. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm always amazed when you post screenshots. Like you'll, <laughs> you'll be like, "Hey, look at this shiny I caught!" And everyone, no one will look at the shiny. They'll just look at your stardust. <laughs> and it'll be like twenty. How did They're you like, even get that number? I think it's glitched. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's legit. That's real. But what about Community Day Classic with your teeny? Did you get to play? Did you enjoy it? Did you? I did get did to you play. Uh, I did enjoy it. Ashton played a little bit with me. Nice. And he caught he caught a shiny before I did, which was nice. I you know I was like, it's been an hour, dude. I haven't caught one. And then he just really? shows it to me. He just shows it to me. We we're sitting in line for Burger King, and he's just like, check it out. I he's got a shiny. Like, Get good, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I was very upset. And he's Draco like, Meteor on Dragonite. Uh, that's good, right? Yeah, I mean we've had it before. Yeah. But this is, I don't know. There's something special about Dragonite. I don't know. It's just like Gyarados. Doesn't necessarily perform exceptionally well, but it's just cool. I don't know. There's a cool factor. You know, obviously Rayquaza and other dragon, you know, might be cooler, but there's just something cool about Dragonite. I don't know. It has the has the nostalgia. Yeah, it, kind of it's vibes. just a big dragon. Green one, but uh, I, I picked up a couple hundred thousand Stardust over the event, so it was pretty cool. Uh, again, I, I'm I only use my Stardust on <laughs> purifying Shadow Pokemon and slowly trickling my power ups through research, so I, I hold on to it. But we had yeah, I got uh, about seven shinies altogether. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't get that many. I mean, I was kind of get good trainer playing playing casually and. You know, just chilling. While I was out playing, I saw someone walking a pig on a leash in the park. That is so cute. It was a big pig. It was And hilarious. you didn't take a picture and send it to Chanel and I? I, I have pictures. I will send them to you uh, okay. <laughs> as right. soon as we're done recording. It was really cool, though. It was, it was beyond cute. I saw it from, like, 500 feet away, and I was like, yo, either that dog is strangely pink <laughs> or that that in fact is a pig. It was a, it was over seventy pounds. I was just like, that's a big pig. They're like, yeah, it's still growing, seventy something pounds. I was like, holy shit, it's a lot of bacon. Oink. It was cute. It was very cute. Uh, we also had uh, Crow Gunk Spotlight Hour yesterday. Did you play? Uh, I Double did XP. a little bit. I had the Pokeball Plus going. It caught. Very few, because I was sitting at Ashton's uh, hockey practice. So, I do want to talk about the Pokeball Plus, or the Go Plus, or Voldemort, right now. Because, post-Community Day Classic, the second Community Day Classic ended, 5 p.m. local time. We had, I was calling them coiny. <laughs> the, the little, the little Paldea region... <laughs> Uh, Pokemon. No, no one knew what the hell was going on. We just saw this little. I didn't know it was a Pokemon. Thing. There was I just like thought a, a, it was like something random. There was a slight leak in the the Scarlet and Violet trailer. You could see like it, it's Gimmigool is the 
is the name of the Pokemon, but you could see its arms like kind of flailing behind one of the trainers in the in the trailer. I I didn't notice until I watched it back. But this is is in fact uh you know a new Pokemon, new gen Pokemon, and it just starts showing up and it follows you around and it's one of the most basic designs I've seen in a Pokemon in a long time. And for whatever reason, it just works. It doesn't look like it's lacking anything because it's so basic. It has these weird antenna that are like dousing rods. And I guess it points you in the direction of coins. Now, we've come to find out that it's either uh, a complete moron or it's just trying to troll us. Because it doesn't. when it points, it's not necessarily pointing at anything. But Yeah, it like points at, in the opposite direction. I'm like, I just at, <laughs> came from there. But at 5 p.m., Post Community Day Classic, all the Pokestops turn gold. They start handing out a shit ton of items, and listen, at a I, very I have low not rate, had you get this, this special coin. Great and Ultra Balls in a while. It was nice. It was nice to clean up, and you know the the cynic in me, right, is saying this is how Niantic gets people to increase their bag space, right? Like everyone's complaining they don't have items, they don't have this, they don't have that, and it's like now all of a sudden we've got this twenty four hours of gold Pokestops that are paying out 10, 15 items a spin. So people were deleting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Pokeballs and then stocking up and scoring on on great and Ultra Balls because they were just flowing in. I saw so many people going, oh, man, I guess I better uh, I better upgrade my bag finally. So it's, uh, it's yeah, very... Yeah, I didn't upgrade my bag, Feels like a sneaky sneaky. I did get my bag full. I kept getting the, your bags full. I was like, how? I just deleted all my potions. This doesn't even make sense. And then I look at my berries and it's like 150 rads. I was like, no. (laughs) I hope you fed the the berries and not deleted the berries. Nope, I deleted those things super fast. All you have to do is hit the back, like the minus button, and it takes you. It takes you right there. You got got the whole full amount. You just hit delete. Are you sure? Yes. You're you're a very poor gym defender. (laughs) I, I have nothing in gyms. <laughs> That's funny. There was the one dollar special research uh, Dratini Community Day Classic. Would it have a name? It didn't even have a name. It was just called Dratini Community Day Classic. <laughs> <laughs> That's real bad. Uh, as per usual, three hour lures and incense. We had some snapshot surprises, all that good stuff. I did get uh, the snapshot surprises. Shout out to Cassidy Cubone for making sure I did that. Yeah, I uh, I I liked this event for a couple reasons. One, of course, the Stardust. Right, that's the the great equalizer. You could have the the, the worst Pokemon, the the least in demand Pokemon, but if you connect it to Triple Stardust, the people are going to come out because they want the dust. I like this because new trainers that are still working on the Dragon Catching Metal had an opportunity to kind of make this happen take care of this in one day so that was really good you had a bunch of old trainers or new trainers coming into it the the stardust hunters you had all that shiny hunters you had all that there's a lot of reasons to like this event but once we saw the whole scarlet violet thing happening afterwards and again we didn't necessarily know that's when things started to get interesting and i guess we can move over to this video that they released and well Ash- which- ashton and i actually were watching jt valor's video and ashton goes are those gold stops in the game is that guy in the game oh uh, jt then, was in the future yeah so when we when after we watched that you know we played community day and then ashton saw them and like freaked out and he was so excited that's so cool. He's like, That's look, so cool. he's on my map. Can I catch him? And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's so little. But they had this video that they posted. It's not even a blog. It's just kind of like this little pseudo press release that they put out on PokemonGoLive.com. But it links to an official Pokemon YouTube video that are called What Are These Mysterious Coins? And it features actual VO dialogue between... Jacques and Professor Willow. And let me tell you, the voice acting is absolutely perfect. It sounds very organic and natural. You ever hear, like, sometimes some of the voice acting, like, in Masters or even, like, Japanese games, that, like, it you could tell that it's a Japanese game doing English voices and it doesn't really sound natural? 
Like it has this kind of weird vibe to it. The voice actors for Jacques and Professor Willow felt like real people having a real conversation. It was awesome. And we've been talking about VO a lot. And this solidified my position of if we had VO in the game consistently, and we had these voices in the game, I would without a doubt pay attention to them and make sure I, I listened to them yeah. whenever there was the scenes. It was so well done. And like, hold on, I have the video in front of me right now. It was a five minute video, which may not seem like much, but that's a long video when you think of like a 30 second teaser to promote like a new feature or something like that. This was like a fleshed out video. They dig into lore. They talk about the connection here and like all this stuff. And then they 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 let you know about Gimme Ghoul. And how it actually has two forms. And what is the roaming form, right? And then the the, the, the chest form, which is the worst name ever. But the roaming form is what we see. And right now, like you're saying, it's not catchable. You can kind of click on it. It does a little happy face like a buddy, but it, it shows a coin. And we're getting these coins from spinning these gold stops. I think it maxes out at 100. We don't know what they're for yet. But we were able to stock up. I could not play much post community. How many coins day. did you get? Like a dozen. I think I had twelve or thirteen that oh, night. I got seven. And then, you know, waking up the next morning, the gold stops were still there. I was like, oh shit, I still have an opportunity to do this. You know. But what ended up happening was at five o'clock, so twenty four hours later, the stops went from being predominantly gold to very few and far between gold stops and they're still there and i'd imagine that they're going to stick around and this will be like a a thing that's going to be going on for a while quite a while but i think i'm at 15 coins right now 15 15 coins something like that so i don't know yeah, what they're going to be used for I, when i saw two of them on haloed pokestops um i actually like went out of my way to find those stops and get the gold and I got that's when I got my seventh so I was I was pretty excited no I I, this can be a good little hook right like let's say they can take control of where they put these gold stops and then they have like the parks that are on the community day map right where they show like here's some you know ambassador event here is a, a hot spot that you may want to play Let's say they take every stop within those hot spots, those parks that they're calling out, and they turn them gold. That will attract people to play in a concentrated area. I just think For it's sure. one one more little gimmick to get people to the same spot. Instead because of calling him Gimme Ghoul, they should have said Gimmick Ghoul. G- gimmick Ghoul. <laughs> no, That's Gimmick what, Ghoul. That's what I'm saying. That's going to be the name of the episode, Gimmick Ghoul. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but... Very cool story. It comes, the the TLDR is ultimately when Scarlet and Violet come out, you'll be able to link your Pigo and Scarlet and Violet games, and through that linking, you'll somehow be able to capture Gimme Ghoul. So I don't know if the coins will have something to do with, oh, the roaming form. You'll be able to catch the roaming form. So I don't know if the coins will be something like, you cash in to have an encounter. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. But you'll need to link your games once it comes out. And it comes out on Friday the 18th. So, uh, Are you getting I'll, it? You know, I don't have a Switch, dude. I don't. Doesn't Josh have a Switch? Josh has a Switch. But I don't have a Switch. What am I going to do? Just get it so I can borrow it? Never play it. <laughs> borrow That'd it and do a 24-hour stream. and I'll just be like, let me get my Meltan box, dude. <laughs> 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 But no, it, it's it, it'll be interesting to see how this actually works and if there's more to it than just the, you know, the let's go kind of importing into the to the storage kind of thing. I don't know what's gonna actually be of it, but you'll be able to catch Gimme Ghoul. But anyway, design is super cool. I thought it was really good. I like that the gold the gold stop mechanic, the gimmick, whatever you want to call it, the gimmick ghoul. I do think that this is something they could use in the future to help concentrate gameplay which i really like like let's say they do elite raids right so what they could do is the ex gyms they're 
you know, few and far between in, in certain communities. Maybe they look at that and say all the stops around the EX gym will be gold for the or elite raid day. in public parks and stuff, you can just put make those all gold. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Exactly. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, just do something to get people to, to come together. I think it's a very passive way to do it, and it takes nominal effort. But if nothing else, people will do it to stock up, right? Because you get such a good return. And what I noticed is they, they, they follow, they currently follow something similar to like the rocket grunts where the stops will rotate through the day and one will be gold for a little while. Then it'll change. It'll go back. You know, it, it's, it just adds a little bit more fluidity to the map and refreshes every so often. So it's, it's kind of cool. So, you mentioned Halo, Halo stops, and and I guess this is this is my time to flex a little bit. So, I went, I go on a walk every day on my lunch break, right? I get an hour lunch break. I usually take about a thirty minute walk, and this one day I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So I I go for like an, a full hour walk, and there's plenty of places to play by my job, but I have to walk to them, and I thought. There was nothing that I could do to add a stop that would be reachable from my job because there's just nothing really happening, nothing really around. And then you listen but, to Wayspotter's podcast? No, I it's it for whatever reason, just because I guess I'm staring at it every day, it didn't click in my head, but I, I work across the street from a diner. And in front of the diner, you know, I live at the Jersey or I work at the Jersey Shore, right? So in front of the diner is like a boat. And it's like a little boat that's on the grass and they have like you know, like a little little mini tree and bushes and flowers and stuff that are growing out of the boat. And there's an anchor like it's part of the design of the, the decor. So I'm like, why have I never submitted this? I've worked at this place for three months and I haven't submitted this as a Pokestop. So I'm like, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to submit that and see what else I could find. So I go for this walk. And I end up submitting four Pokestops on the one hour walk. Two park signs a memorial sign, and this boat. And I'm, like, starting to get really excited about this boat because I'm, like, I will definitely be able to reach this from my desk, like, if I could pull this off. So we had one, the Wayspotters podcast had won the virtual Twitter Wayfarer challenge, right? So we got a, uh, we got, like, a free upgrade in our added to our accounts. So I didn't have an upgrade. So I nominated those four stops. I immediately upgraded the boat, the one that's at my job. I shit you not, four days later, all four stops got added to the game. Wow. One, two, three, four. I now have a work stop. I'm very happy. Very, very, very happy. And now you have a nice little path you can walk and get a bunch of stops. Exactly. And the cool part about it was, like, you know, I submitted them all in the one walk that... You know, three days later, it was like midnight. I get the email like, congratulations, you've been approved. I was like, oh, shit, this is great. 6 a.m., another email. 7 a.m., another email. Like they, The email started trickling in for the four different stops. Like they went through so fast. And when I get to work that morning at 8 o'clock, the stops are not live physically in the game yet. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I was like, just please show up in the game. I didn't want them to be like a light. You know, there, there was no reason they wouldn't show up. The S2 cells were open. It was perfect. I was like, maybe they're going to make this like a light ship one. You know, I just, I just, just please let me have my work stop. I don't care about the others. And when I got to work, nothing was uh, the sink hadn't happened yet. I went for my walk. The My work stop wasn't there yet. I walk all the way down to the water. The first stop, it re- refreshed 1 p.m. I was like, holy shit, the stops are there. And by the time I walked back to my job the stop was there at my job. I was like, holy shit, it's on. It's so great. So now I can stock up. I never have to worry about items again because I'm going to be, you know, go plussing. And this is the, 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 the moral of the story here. Now that I have a stop there, the impact of having a go plus to use every day, I will never take this thing for granted again. Because now it's like I'm back to using the Go Plus all the time. And I'm not using the Pokeball Plus because mine took a shit. So 
I have to press the button to spin the stop every time. Like, this is freaking annoying. Like, it really makes me want another Pokeball Plus. But all in all, I'm like, my life would be shittier in terms of my gameplay right now if I didn't have this device. And I think a lot of people over the past couple weeks have really, you know, kind of dug into their use of these peripherals. And it's like, it's very important to them. And it's showing like, yeah, yeah, this is this is kind of, again, the 1%, right? We're the, we're the rarity, we're the anomalies. I, I understand that, I get it. But it really does impact our gameplay in a, yeah. in a big way, in a big, big way. Especially but, when you only have so many stops you can hit in a day. Like my route home, there's only like two areas where it gets slow enough for me to actually hit the stops. And so if I didn't have the Go Plus going or the Pokeball Plus going, I wouldn't get any stops. Yeah, see, that's rough, man, because I'm I'm so spoiled because, I mean, for my house right now, I don't, while I, I'm not sitting on a stop, I could rotate the map and I'll see I'll see eight gyms and 30 stops. You know what I mean? Like I'm just so it's so densely packed where I am. So I'm so spoiled in that in that sense. But having the the Go Plus, it really it makes a, a massive, massive difference in the gameplay. It's it's totally nuts. But anyway, gold stops, gold coins. We don't know what they're for. Chest form, gimme ghoul, random or roaming form, gimme ghoul. Very cool. Very cool. Gimme cool. Gimme, 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 very, gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme cool. Uh, no, but gimme anyway, cool. very, very cool you hearing keep Professor saying Willow's gimmick voice. Cool. It's gimmick cool. Gimmick ghoul. Gimmick ghoul. There you go. But, you said it right. It only took the entire episode. No, but uh, <laughs> no, Professor Willow's voice, phenomenal. He he's talked before, but this one he sounded much more youthful. He sound it just sounded real, like it didn't seem to have that weird. I don't know. Like when you listen to like VO in like a Metal Gear game, and you're like, dude, this is such a Japanese person putting on like an American, yeah. an American <laughs> accent. <laughs> it's like this felt very natural. They did a really good job in uh. In, in doing that VO. So want to see more of that. Niantic, give us more. All right. Uh, I guess we can, we can swing into greedy gluttons. Cause that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at now. And this oh, is a long, I'm too full. Event. I'm too full right now. They released another one of these, uh, pseudo found footage videos with, uh, with Guzzlord kind of ripping itself through a wormhole, which looks absolutely amazing. They continue to impress, with this video stuff that they've done. Really, really cool. But this is a long ass event, November 9th through November 17th. Yeah, it comes and through the wormhole and then just sits on the person taking a video. Just crushes them. <laughs> just crushes them. Yo, it looks scary as hell. It is a phenomenal looking Pokemon. Like the model is great. The animations are great. In AR, it's great. It's just like, it's just very, great. Very cool. It's great. It's, it's, it's ultra. Great. Some would say it's even ultra. It is ultra. It is phenomenal. Someone was at Lachlan messaged me. They're like, new drinking game. Take a shot every time Ken says the word phenomenal. So it's like, phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. But it says in the release, trainers, we hope you brought your appetite because the Greedy Gluttons event is bringing some heavy and hungry hitters, including Lickitung, Snorlax, Mega Gyarados, and more. Speaking of hungry and ult- the Ultra Beast Guzzlord has emerged from our ultra wormholes all over the world. Ah, ah, ah. We also receive reports that Team Go Rocket might be cooking up some trouble with different shadow Pokemon during this time period. Stay alert. So Guzzlord actually came a day early. Guzzlord was here from the 8th. Greedy Glutton started on the 9th, goes all the way to the 23rd, but the event ends on the 17th. I don't know why they do things like this. <laughs> just make it so confusing. time zones maybe you know stuff like that because i know i know away, lachlan sent apart. me one shout out to well, lachlan yeah. he got me a guzzlord he sent guzzlord it to me guzzlord from the future so they did a uh, a pretty interesting bonus here this is the first time they've done this and it just says event bonuses half hatch distance for the first three eggs hatched during the event using the pokemon go egg hatching widget Widget is available for iOS and Android. So, Adam, are you using any Pigo widgets on your device? No. Really? See, I use both the Buddy and the Egg widget. But if you have the Egg widget, the first three eggs of the event, so hopefully you did 12Ks, half hatch distance. So pretty nice, but short-lived. You know, once those eggs hatched, no more egg, no more egg bonuses, even though the event is, you know, 
11 days long or however long it is. Uh, Wild Encounters, pretty interesting. Alolan Rattata, Alolan Raticate, Golbat, Swina, Pelipper, Gulpin, Bidoof, Bibarel, and Squovet. Yes, cool seeing Squovet. Can't be shiny. Uh, plenty of Bibarel seeing those in the wild. Pelipper can't be shiny. Alolan Raticate can't be shiny. However, the chase for tiny rats. That's what I'm talking about. This is the this is the highlight of the event for me, is, is tiny rats. Catching freaking small Rattatas, which can be shiny in Alolan Rattata, but uh, Bidoof also. But Lickitung, Snorlax, Swalot, the If You're Luckies. Always good seeing Snorlax in the wild. I don't care who you are. If you see a Snorlax, you're going to catch it. You're going to go for it, right? It's, it's like you got phenomenal. It. Yeah, A plus, A plus catch. In raids, Mankey, Swineup, Spoink, and Tepig in tier one. That's a pass for me, dog. I am not. Excited about any of those. Three stars, Snorlax, Mawile, Swalot, Sharpedo, Mawile, Snorlax in there. Snorlax, full odd shiny from a raid? Like, dude, not worth it. Uh, Guzzlord and five star Mega Gyarados up top in the Mega Raids, which is all right. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. Eggs, 7Ks, Cherubi, Gibble, Munchlax, with Munchlax shiny being released for the first time. Okay. We had Noibat, which was already a rare Pokemon. Shiny Noibat being released exclusively in 7K eggs during the last event, Halloween event. People were a little bummed. Now we have another event with a very, very highly sought after and in-demand Pokemon with Munchlax, Shiny Munchlax. And you can only get it in 7K eggs. Not a good look. Not a good look. We'll move on for now, but I'll, I'll come back to this. Field Research, Execute, Cherubi, Swirlix. Those are pretty good Pokemon. Cherubi is definitely a holdout for a lot of people, so is Swirlix. Uh, there will be timed research, uh, including Golden Raspberries, Silver Pineapple Berries. So this didn't make much sense to me. Greedy Glutton's event, and you have to walk to unlock the timed research. Well, you got to walk off your Thanksgiving meals. How, I think they missed, that's what they're how, thinking. Shouldn't th these tasks have been feed berries? Feed berries yes. to gyms. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, you know that what I'm makes saying? more like, sense. That would have been way cooler. Would have been way cooler. But a lot of people are like, it's you have all this time to walk seven kilometers. You're you're for the most part, if you're an active player or whatever, you're gonna hit this. But a Snorlax encounter and a Poffin, I think, is a reward. So not terribly exciting i think people are more interested in completing this just to get it out of their today view than to actually worry about getting a reward because some people don't give a shit about poffins i like poffins so i'm okay with that uh second half of the event or or at the tail end of the event team go rocket takeover from the 14th through the 17th monday to thursday shadow mewtwo Returning to the game. This is Shadow exciting. Mewtwo. Let's this go. This is big. Yeah, this is this is good. This is very good. Giovanni's greed and ambition know no limits. And this time his machinations include Shadow Mewtwo. A new special research story will be available at the beginning of the event. Progress through it to receive a super rocket radar and chase down Giovanni. Spoiler alert, he'll probably just come in a balloon. I don't think I think they should disable Giovanni in balloons. I, I like the chase. I like going out and having to find him. I don't want the bullshit just shows up. I I just wish it wasn't automatic that he shows up like in a in a balloon. It's I, I wish it was a grunt and you had to fight a few grunts before they gave it to you. Well, you have to do that anyway as part of the special research. It'll probably be like defeat the leaders. So yeah, but you know, normally you're, you're there's like a there's like a impersonator 18. one where it's like, Ooh, oh, is yeah. this? That's how you get your shadow uh, bell sprout. The, the, yeah, the, the, exactly. The, the fakers. Uh, but new shadow Pokemon coming: Shadow Alolan Diglett, Shadow Onix, Shadow Natu, Shadow Whalmer, Shadow Golet. I know it's not Christmas yet, but still no word on the return of Shadow. Deli bird. It's killing Listen, me. Listen, if we don't get that this year, I mean, they, there's so much they can do to the map. You know what I mean? They got presents everywhere. Yeah, Deli bird's got to be a big December a big deal. is part of Season of Light. They're not going to do another Team Go Rocket takeover in December. So I don't think we're going to see Shadow Deli bird again. That sucks. 
makes me super sad. Event bonuses, Team Go Racket will appear more frequently. You can use Charge TM to shadow Pokemon uh, to forget frustration. Again, you can search on the move frustration. At frustration, it'll show you all the Pokemon that have it. Just use that list. Just fucking burn through your Charge TMs. I, I literally was saving my Charge TMs, and I was like, I have to get rid of them. Those golden stops killed me. I was sitting on 200-something charged TMs. I'm like, fuck it. I got it. They're, they're, it's got to go. They got to go. <laughs> so annoying. During the Team Go Rocket takeover, Egg's big pool update to 12Ks here. So for the first time, if you're lucky, you can catch or hatch another raid, another egg-exclusive shiny Pokemon, shiny Ponyard. 7k eggs during the top, the front half of the event, you get shiny Munchlax, 12k eggs at the end of the event, shiny Pawnyard. We're going to talk about our feelings uh, at the end of the show about this stuff happening, and I think it it has a a greater impact because the boxes are so so shitty. Uh, But we'll talk about it. Uh, Field research will also give out um, a mysterious component. No big deal there. So, Greedy Glutton's event. I think we could both agree. Guzzlord, fucking awesome, right? Yes, 100%. <laughs> the rest of the event? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I genuinely liked it. Like, I mean, there's too many good Pokemon that are just like roaming around. Lickitung, Snorlax, I think will carry the event. I guess Bidoof also. Well, currently, I'm working on my catch 480 normal types, so I am loving this because there is a consistent amount of oh, Rattata, the rats. Yep. Radicate, Bidoof, Bidoof Babarel. So Babarel scared the living daylights out of me because I know Buffalant is not in my direct area, and so I like saw oh, it. It was like it was backwards. A like looking away from me and I was like, what is that? That, that Like, is that a Buffalot? I literally had to like pull over and stop just to like see. I was like, oh, okay. It's just a Bidoof. It's <laughs> a Bibarel. non-shiny Bibarel. <laughs> yeah. But catching a bunch of Squavette for um, my XL candies is awesome. So, I mean, I'm looking at this positively. Uh, I yeah. would like to catch a normal shiny Snorlax and not the one with the cowboy hat because I already got that one. But but let's think of it like this, though. We're only two days into the event. So this is going on for, you know, another eight days. Is is Bibarel still going to feel exciting in seven days from now when we're still seeing it? Like, that's the point. Like, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be enough to carry this. Even Guzzlord. Guzzlord's great. We had our, our raid hour, but next Wednesday raid hour is going to be just as popping off for Guzzlord because it's not shiny. And will people be excited about Squovet on their, you know, eighth day of catching it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Definitely write in info. I mean, uh, lured up at PokemonProfessor.com. Info at PokemonProfessor.com is the main email. But uh, let us know what you think. Because, uh, yeah, it's interesting, interesting stuff. But, all right, let's let's uh, let's take a little break. When we come back, we can uh, talk about this IRL, the, the impact of... Yes, yes, of, yes, of let's do the that. The dollars let's do and that. cents behind these IRL events, which is pretty impressive. We have Community Day Teddy Ursa to talk about. We'll do a raid guide and battle party for Guzzlord, and we'll have this conversation about egg-locked shinies. But first... A word from our sponsor. Hey, Adam. Hey, Ken. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. And whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants. You can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the Lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. (laughs) Then add in Manscaped's top-of-the-line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack, and so should you. (laughs) Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and using the code BALLCHECK for free shipping and 20% off. 
That's B-A-L-L-C-H-E-C-K for free shipping and 20% off. The Platinum Package has each product from the Best Selling Performance Package Plus, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Plus Conditioner, and Ultra Premium Deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. Oh, my God. (laughs) The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code BALLCHECK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BALLCHECK. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. (laughs) All right, a little internal housekeeping really quick before we get to the ass of the show. This podcast is powered by Patreon, and you can check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And all patrons are eligible to participate in our monthly Pigo and TCGO prize tournaments, Registration is in the Discord. We hope to see you there. Huge thanks to our gym leaders, Absolutely Ryan, Austin Zard, Ethan Hall, the Counselor, Grant Jamal, Mythical Hitch, Sue, the Cole Tish, and Big Zom Minus. Oh, big thanks to our newest patron, James, for joining at the Discord tier this week. Thank you, James. Woo-hoo. Special thanks to our executive producer, Paul Bott. Make sure you check out PokemonProfessor.com for links to everywhere you can connect with us, grab some merch, and leave us a review. All right, Adam. Ken. Let's get back to it. IRL Impact. This was really cool. Uh, I saw this floating around Twitter, and then GoHub put together a little article. This data is coming from Statista, which is kind of like just this strange data aggregate website that pulls in all different types of, of retail info. But it says Niantic's three flagship Pokemon Go live events delivered a combined $309 million dollars to local economies in their host cities during 2022, including total expenditure and associated increase in tax revenue. Pretty freaking awesome. It says, underlining the growing appetite for the gaming community events in the real world, the combined impact was on par with figures for the Super Bowl, which is insane. The Super Bowl generated anywhere between 234 and $477 million for Los Angeles County. And uh, the Women's UEFA uh, Euro UEFA Euro 2022 tournament, 60 million. So bringing wow. in 309 million, absolutely insane. But here's the stats. Here's the breakdown in total. Uh, 150,000 participants with an average 85% traveling from outside the host city. Pretty awesome. $650 average per visitor. on average declaring a desire to return to the host city within 12 months. I think that's an important one, right? People go to a city for a Pokemon Go event, and they're like, oh, shit, Chicago is fucking awesome. I want to come back, you know, and they come back when there's no event. Well, Seattle was amazing. That was so awesome. Yeah. That was an amazing experience. Like, I would love to go back to Seattle for any reason whatsoever. That was that's, that was the shit. Uh, 38 million Pokemon caught and 10.2 kilometers on average explored per Pokemon trainer. Yo, that sounds light as shit. 10.2 kilometers. There's some lazy-ass travelers. Well, they all got in the Ubers and they left. So here's uh, here's some, some breakdowns for dollars and cents here. Sapporo, 81 million. Berlin, 73 million. And Seattle, $155 million in positive wow. economic impact, which was absolutely amazing. And, you know, I, I retweeted this and I had put like, hey, we're responsible for at least $3,000 of that because our pub crawl generated over, it was like $3,200 in, in sales for local <laughs> the local bars. So uh, we contributed of that $155, $155 million, we, we definitely contributed at least three grand. <laughs> To that. That's awesome. That's so <laughs> they cool. They couldn't have made that number without us. Um, no, but very, very cool. And, you know, it, it's there's a tweet in here from Michael Staronka. It says, this year's Pokemon Go Fest events clearly resonated with thousands of trainers who traveled to new cities and countries to spend time reconnecting with other players. So true, man. It's all about, it's all about the live shit. It's all about the live shit. So, I don't know. I just think it was a, a really cool... Uh, little site to see this infographic talking about this 
you know, this is positive. This is a, a reason and a way for Pokemon Go to be positively shared in the in the news cycle and in the gaming news cycle. And it breaks the barriers of the gaming world, right? Because, you know, typically when you have big sporting events or like even big esports events, you'll you'll have this kind of thing. Like, well, how much did it actually impact tourism? How much did it actually impact the local government? Here you go. Three hundred and nine million between three cities. Freaking huge. Absolutely awesome. All right, before we uh, we do our Guzzlord Battle Party, uh, this weekend is November Community Day, uh, Teddy Ursa, on Saturday, 2 to 5 p.m. Good luck, and trainers. Catch a bunch of shiny. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be good. It's a, it's a fun shiny. I like, uh, you know, it's a little green it's, yeah, it's green so, gummy bear. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Ursa Luna will learn, learn high horsepower. This will be See, available there you go. to evolve. That's not shite. It's not shite, but it, it performs like <laughs> shite. But uh, the, I guess the, the full moon will be out on the map, and then that, that's when you can evolve Ursula. Fun Luna, fact, says. the full moon was yesterday, the 8th. In real life? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I took I took a, a picture of the moon, or a video. Isn't it like a harvest moon? Yeah. I don't know. I saw I saw JC Picks posted some crazy Hawaiian time-lapse shit on his shit, which was the shit. Shout out to JC Picks, uh, but yeah, it would have been cool if they could have lined these up, right? Like if, if I, I'm sure, I'm sure they had to like they had it planned, but they couldn't make a community day on a Thursday. You know what I mean? And it's the like far, the farmers almanac wouldn't line up. Yeah, <laughs> change it. Whoever we're gonna have, <laughs> got to change the full moon pattern. Uh, One dollar community day research story. You ready for the name? A sweet um, snack. A sweet snack. Ooh, Not bad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, but just like Community Day Classic, triple Stardust for catching Pokemon, two times Candy for catching Pokemon, two times Chance at Candy Excel, three-hour lures and incense, snapshot surprises, extra special trade, 50% less Stardust, all the good stuff that we know and love about it. Bonus raid battles after Community Day, Ursaring, can't be shiny, uh, that you could do, and then you get the extra spawns. Uh, those cool stickers are, are here as well, but really the big deal is this new gimmick for evolving Ursaluna during the full moon. Is this going to be like an Umbreon scenario going forward where we don't actually need the full moon, we just need it to be nighttime? Or is it like going to be you can only evolve this thing when they do I a think, full moon event? I think with the game becoming more immersive, I I would like to keep it the same. Because the moon is always going to happen, you know what I mean. You just have to wait. So it had like you just have to see it physically on the map, and then be like, "Oh shit!" Be bust out the yeah, the and it might be you know, the game recognizes the full moon as you know three day window versus one actual day. You know what I mean? There has oh, okay. to be some some yeah. sort of gimmick like that where the game. Well, that's why I was thinking like, like the moon Umbreon. Is big and circular right now for the next three days. The moon is made of cheese. Yeah, or, or something cheese. like that, or like it's got a week every month or something like that. You know, like I'm sure they'll they'll have enough time. Yeah, to I, I, I don't know. I, I I think that all these little things, like you were saying, it does add to the immersion. So I, I kind of like these little pop up mini sub events of little things happening here and there. I think it's cool. Definitely cool. So that's this Saturday. Get get down on it because it'll be good. 2 All to right, 5 Adam, p.m., I, right? Yep, 2 to 5 p.m. local, and then the raids go from 5 to 10. Uh, Adam, I think it's time for the battle party, though. It's the what? Battle party. Battle party. Ooh, 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 battle party. Battle party. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, we got Guzzlord. G -g 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 Guzzlord. Yo, it does look really good. It does look really, really good. We're going to be looking to PokeBattler.com for our battle party here. We also have GoHub pulled up for a little, <clears throat> some details here. But uh, Guzzlord is a dark dragon type. It's weak to bug, dragon fighting, ice, and double weak to fairy. Double weak to fairy? You don't say. Just remember, like, even though it's weak to dragon, that means it's also going to be doing, you know, super effective damage to dragons. So... If I don't know, just don't bring fucking dragons. Just bring fairy. Just just bring fairy. So you can actually solo Guzzlord. 
if you have the right stacked fairy counters. Which I think is great because a lot of people have a shit ton of like Togekiss candy or Togepi candy that they could power up their Togekiss. Double double fairy move. You could absolutely solo this thing. Her- shout to Heracross Boss. Put up a video of him soloing it in the right conditions. It was really cool. Uh, the 100% cash you're going to be looking for, 1,650 CP in level 20 and 2062 at level 25. Foggy and windy weather gets the boost. So 1650 and 2062. Uh, there's a bunch of different moves this thing can learn uh, with Poke Battler rating the most dangerous move set as Snarl Sludge Bomb. So it can learn, uh, you know, Sludge Bomb, Brutal Swing, Crunch, and Dragon Claw. They actually have Dragon Claw as the weakest move uh, moves that you can get. But for, for the intents and purposes of our battle party, we're going to be keeping all the Poke Battler filters on to start Shadow, Legendary, and Mega. And this was pretty interesting. Usually the Mega Pokemon is the first on the list. We actually don't see the, the first Mega Pokemon until till number three. Shadow Gardevoir coming in at number one with Charm, Dazzling Gleam. Shadow Granbull with Charm, Play Rough is number two. Yo, Shadow Granbull is not something I would ever necessarily invest in. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to be using that. But uh, Mega Alakazam is number three, even though it does not have a fast fairy move, you at least get that dazzling gleam. But here's the thing. You're going to be doing the buff is going to go to psychic Pokemon, psychic attacks, not fairy attacks. So bringing Mega Alakazam is more of a selfish play because, yeah, you're going to be doing high output with Dazzling Gleam. It's going to be able to tank a little bit more. It has a low death rate, but you're not going to be boosting your teammates' fairy attacks, which kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, of bringing a Mega. I do that so I could buff the team. Uh, After that, we see regular Gardevoir. We see Togekiss, Zerkatry with Thundershock, Dazzling Gleam. That's an interesting one. Not a lot of opportunity to use Zerkatry. Uh, Hero Form, Zacian. Primarina is up there. Grand Bull, Sylveon. You know, then we got Tapu Koko. We got a couple others going in the back. But if we remove Shadow and Mega Pokemon, it's a pretty interesting lineup. Gardevoir, Togekiss, Zerkatry, Zacian. Primarina, Gramble, Sylveon, Tapu Koko, Galarian, Rapidash. Yo, Primarina, not something I've ever used in a raid battle. Not so. something I've ever used. I know, right? So I haven't even that, evolved. That Poplio, makes me want to so use it. Let's talk about that. Oh you know? come on! <laughs> so terrible. But I, you know, if I'm going to put together a party to solo this thing, this is what I'm bringing. I'm going to lead with. Uh, I'm just going to put Mega Altaria. I mean, Mega Alakazam might be better on the solo, but I'm just going to put Mega Altaria, uh, Shadow Gardevoir, regular Gardevoir, and uh, three Togekiss, including a level 50, and I think I have like a level 45. The level 50 is a hundo best buddy. So I've got a stacked uh, Togekiss there for sure, which is cool. But I definitely want to try to solo this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that tomorrow, I think. Try to try to get a solo in. Mega Altaria, Shadow Gardevoir, Regular Gardevoir, and three Togekiss. Adam, what about you? Um, I'm going to be bringing my Mega Alakazam. <clears throat> I'm selfish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then my 100% Togekiss, Clefable, Donphan, Slurpuff, and Gardevoir. Slurpuff? Okay. It ranked higher than all the other stuff. <laughs> Don fan's pretty cool, I guess. Do you actually yeah. have fairy moves on your Don fan? Or you need I to don't. TMs? I'm going to have to TM it. And I <laughs> just deleted so a few TMs. It's so funny. All right. Well, we got a pretty diverse lineup here. Let us know if you could solo this thing. Definitely tag us. If you uh, if you do a screen recording of it, I'd love to watch uh, Guzzler go down. Pause, uh, giggity. Uh, go go down by a by a solo raid. That'd be pretty cool. Pretty fun to see, and uh, it just looks amazing. Just absolutely beefy and scary and terrifying, and you know, just looks so freaking good in AR. I love it so much. All right, so with uh, all that stuff behind us, I guess we can ride out the last couple minutes of the episode, just kind of talking about these 
egg locked shinies. I wanted to get your your feelings on this because you know, for a while you were running, for a while you were really focusing on hatching. You were buying, you know, incubators and then we had the shitty boxes start to come through and you can't really get a good deal on incubators unless you spend big bucks. So, how does yeah. this make you I've feel? Learned, does it give you I've the FOMO? I've learned that if I don't have a stockpile, like if I don't buy a whole bunch of coins at once, I'm more conscious of what I have and how I spend my money. So I'm not buying three raid passes at a time. I'm choosing to buy one at a time. And yeah, it's, it's a couple of different transactions, but it's like, I've only got two versus knowing that I was like buying three at a time, which means I would have to spend in the three. Yeah. yeah, And I would have to spend the five, $5 to get the 550 coins. I understand I get more, but it just, it just has stopped me from spending, which I'm fine with. And well, I'm not too excited about not being able to hatch eggs. Like I would really like to hatch eggs. I literally have a single incubator going right now. That's same, same. I mean, because the Explorer box, we talked about it last week, right? Great discount, 1,350 coin discount, all good. But you're, you're spending your entire $20 investment in one transaction that feels shitty when i had the 1480 box i was able to buy the box and have some left over so i could be like all right i'm gonna buy a pack of incense a pack of lucky eggs you know yep. here and there yeah you'd be able to do you could stretch your dollar more for your here, dollar <laughs> you're you're buying and it's gone one transaction and it's all gone that all that of it just doesn't feel good and again I don't necessarily want to pay for 10 regular fucking incubators. I want more super incubators. And then they force you to get incense and remote raid passes all tucked in. It's like, yeah, not, not good. So I unfortunately will be on the single incubator grind through this entire event. I'll do my 12 Ks. You know, I love doing my rocket stuff, right? So I'll do all the rocket stuff. I'll go after it, but when it comes down to hatching, I will be on that single incubator grind. I did put three 12K eggs in, you know, because I do use the egg widget. So I was able to take advantage of that. But I don't know, man. I just think that people are going to start to get angrier and angrier and angrier the more and the more they do this. And, you know... These are new first time releases. It's not like, you know, all right, shiny Riolu, right? Where it's been around a couple times, people know better. This yes. is their this is their debut. We had debut of shiny Noibat, debut of shiny Munchlax, debut of shiny Ponyard. People will want to go after these. And there's going to be a delay before they come back again. That's just how they do it. So I just don't think this is a sustainable way to release new shinies. They have to do something different. They have to. Yes, I totally agree. There there needs to be some sort of box switch up. I understand that like economy is changing and stuff, but like I would like to hatch eggs again. What about giving incubators as part of like a the research, a special research or something like that where I think we did, just got something like that recently. Did we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure did we, we did. Did we get one? I yeah. don't know. But like if it was part of the narrative, again, it would add to the immersion. I'm working with the professor to figure out, you know, to do some research on new shiny Pokemon that are showing up. So it's like he rewards me with an incubator because I need that incubator to go and try to get the shiny Pokemon that we're researching like that adds to the immersion. I would be so down for that. I just don't think that this is going to be sustainable and we're at strike two right now, right? Noibat was strike one. Now we've got two Pokemon here. Strike two. If they do this again, one more event where they have another locked out shiny behind eggs, the the torches and the pitchforks will be coming out. I, I just think that people are kind of like biding their time. They're like, this doesn't feel good at all. They can't do this again. They cannot yeah. do this again. It'll be it'll be bad. Like I said, I've slowed look. down my spending. You know, all I all I do is I want to hatch eggs. Like that's 
exciting to me. I enjoy hatching eggs. Well, for me, it's like I the the habit hasn't changed. I'm just reallocating. So I'm reallocating what I would normally get the you know the incubator box, and I'm just buying chunks of remote raid passes. But I have found myself doing one remote raid pass at a time rather than the three. Yeah, only because yeah. it's like it's the only way. It stops you from doing like twenty raids back to back to back to back. That's that's the problem. I just go through them so quick, and it's like, I don't know. I I feel more inclined to raid in person if I'm not sitting on a surplus of remote raid passes, which is probably why they only let you carry three to begin with. But either way, it's like having cash in my wallet. If I have three dollars cash in my wallet, that fucking three dollars is spent. If I have three remote raid passes in my inventory, <laughs> I'm using them like right away. <laughs> like, you know, we're spoiled, right? We've got. The amazing Discord community. We've got an amazing Twitter community. I'm getting raid invites nonstop all day long. It's like if I had an unlimited amount of remote raid passes, I'd be able to use them. Just exactly. So many, exactly. so many invites coming in. It's it's a it's a slippery slope, and it's like I'm missing the gameplay loop. Am I still walking? Yeah, I'm still walking. I'm doing my my Pikmin Bloom challenges. Like I'm still I still care about all that. Do but- you though? I definitely do. Oh, okay, I definitely okay. do. Dude, I when I leave my house in the morning and I walk to the car, like I'm checking Pikmin before I do Pokemon because I want to get that shit out of the way. <laughs> you know, so, so it's like but it's part of my routine now. So I definitely I definitely do that every single day. But I want Pigo to motivate me to walk the same way Pikmin Bloom motivates me to walk. And it's the opposite of that right now. It's so far off. It's just not a good look. Not a good look. I definitely want to hear what everybody's take is on this. We'll probably do a, you know, if not a poke the bear, just some kind of discussion. Maybe we'll do a Twitter space this week talking about uh, locked out Pokemon, locked out content behind some sort of paywall, whether it's a raid Pokemon or an egg Pokemon, something that requires things additional to effort and additional to time commitment. Like, you know, you, you could go out and grind full odd shiny, and as long as you put in the time, you're going to catch it, right? But if you want that, uh, yeah, egg, tell, the tell egg that lock to Delibird. shiny. Why? Remember, you only... I, I spent like the cool. entire day trying to get Delibird. Like, I literally put in the effort, I put in the time. You, you still didn't catch enough, though, Adam. Oh, <laughs> Adam, oh, oh, Adam was, was literally driving around for 10 hours straight. <laughs> I remember you getting in trouble for not coming home at a certain time or something like that. No, I think I got pulled over. They were like, what are you doing? It's embarrassing, officer. I can't tell you. I'm trying to catch a deli bird. They're like, yes, but there's a whole bunch on the map right now. Just catch this one right here with us and go go home. I can't go home. I need the shiny. Now, let us know what you think. Lured up at PokemonProfessor.com. This is not sustainable in any way. I just don't. They they have to they have to have a balance. They have to have a balance. And like Noibat was one Pokemon, right? It was like, okay, it's Noibat, it's one thing. But then to come with the very next event and have two new shinies locked behind eggs, it's like, damn. Is the next event gonna have three fucking shinies locked behind eggs? Like, what's next? It's, I I think they, without tipping their hat, they kind of have to make good on some of the shit that they've had. And this, this, this one really reeks of shit. This is a smelly one because, you know, there's no one that's going to be excited about this. You know, sometimes like if there's a, a, it's more fun to do raids and shiny hunt than hatch eggs and shiny hunt. Because when you're doing raids, you can at least say, I'm only going to do this raid. You know, it's yeah. still it's still a, p- a pool of Pokemon you have to compete with when you're hatching for a shiny, right? It's like, yeah, I could I really want to, you know, I really 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 want to hatch a, a shiny Munchlax, but you're also going to be hatching Cherubi and Gibble, you know what I mean? And it's like Non-stop. Gibble used to be hot shit, but and then it had a know, community day. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yo, I'll take that Cherubi though. Fuck yeah, give me that Cherubi for sure. But uh, t- I want that Munchlax. I really, really do. And I don't have a regular Snorlax. I only have I have two shiny cowboy hat Snorlaxes. From yeah, Go but Fun. would you evolve your 
shiny munchlax? <laughs> Only if I had two of them. Oh. If I had two, for sure. I definitely would. I definitely would. But I don't know. I, I just don't like it. I don't think it's a good look. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't understand the reasoning. I mean, maybe the proof is in the pudding. Maybe they're like, yeah, we do this and people get upset and butthurt. But guess what? The, we're selling more incubators at a higher rate. You know what I mean? So it's like they could talk shit about the boxes all they want. People are still buying them. They could talk shit about, you know, the, the Pokemon being egg locked. But guess what? They're still buying incubators. So, you know, maybe they're just uh, turning deaf ear to the noise on, on social. Eye. Yeah. And just, uh, <sighs> I don't know. I just don't think it's a, I do not think it's a good look at all, at all. They got to do something different. They got to, can't keep doing this shit. People are going to get madder and madder and madder and madder. More mad and more mad. They're going to get the more maddest. But Adam, that's a show. That sounds like a show. It is. It was. It completely was a show. We totally did it. But thank you, everyone, for checking us out. We really do appreciate it. Check out PokemonProfessor.com for everything we have going on with the network. LuredUp.com for everything we have going on the show. Like I said, check our socials for a conversation uh, or potentially a Twitter space on this whole shiny egg lock situation. But you can email us, LuredUp at PokemonProfessor.com. And you can leave us a text, voicemail, picture, video, anything, 732-835-8639. But Adam, if that's it, I do, in fact, believe that that would be it. Is it it? That's it. Keep training, trainers. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.